does this affect us as people and where do we take this as people and as individuals um, also in saying, you know, are we just asking these people to come and show up and teach us stuff or are we also going to where they are and learning from them there? Are we also showing support for them where they are? Are we going to show up to every anti smart beat, you know, protest that comes up in the, in the coming months? You know? how, how, where does our solidarity extend to? Does it just have to come from them to us? Or do we also have to take the steps to show solidarity with them? Not because it's good for the climate change, but because they're humans. And that's that should be our responsibility as fellow humans to care for them and care for their issues, whether it's related to climate or not. Uh, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I wanted to open the floor, but I want to ask one question to Arwen, because this is, um, you know, talking about white supremacy and talking about uh, anti-racial is a very progressive, it's a political conversation. Um, how can- And you're not going to win co-workers over with it. Possibly. Yeah, so I was going that yeah. way, like how can we as a movement um, help uh, FFA or um, the, the, the conversation within that to move towards- By saving at least workers seriously. It doesn't matter if you're an indigenous people or if you're a co-worker in Amsterdam. I mean, you should be taken seriously. You're losing your job. It's quite simple. I mean, it doesn't really matter that there's somebody in, uh, in Colombia also losing their job because it's the same thing. So what we try to do internationally is uh, forge alliances with other trade unions. I mean, I can tell you stories that will be quite hair-raising about people who want a trade union uh, getting arrested, getting murdered, uh, activists getting murdered. You all know the stories probably. But what we shouldn't do, I think, and I feel quite strongly about that, is hectoring the coal workers here because it's also not their fault, necessarily. I mean, they've been doing the work. They're probably not really highly educated. They're not going to get a flying fuck about this right beat at this point. So if you go there tomorrow and say, Swart beat should go out, and uh, by the way, bye-bye for your job, you'll just alienate them really quickly. So uh, I mean, I, I, no, no, that's the same thing, same thing. Because they probably go, yeah, well, I've been working with these white people my whole life. Uh, I don't want this discussion. I'm losing my job. So try and be, you know, kind of also open to the people who are at the factory that you are telling that they should shut and go find other work, which is not there at the moment. So for them, it's the same thing as for the indigenous people on the other side of the world, because we're all indigenous people in the end. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the discussions. No, it, uh, again, I'm, I'm oversimplifying, obviously, because I, I don't have three hours. I'm, I'm not the enemy, you know. Um, but you should be careful to take them seriously as well, because if you don't, you'll lose them, and you'll lose the movement, and you'll lose any movement forward, because we have to also make sure that they can still find a subsistence uh, by finding different work. So maybe help them think or ask for their knowledge about how to do things differently. Thank you. Yeah, it is working. Oh, it is working. Um, also within this system, so for many people, including many indigenous racialized people all over the world, there is indeed uh, sort of two choices. It's like because colonialism brought uh, the situation there, brought these companies there, uh, the mining, the, the extraction there, that um, often it's like either you survive uh, and perpetuate like the very same system that is trying to kill you, you know, that is deeply anti-indigenous, for example, that's deeply colonial, um, but that's the only sort of option there is in a particular area to survive. So for me, that's also a really big part of the decolonial project is to say um, that it should, that the, the, the choice should not just be either we sort of catch up with Europe, uh, as Fanon said, or we catch up the wealth that the, the Occident has, um, or we die. So um, yes, I, I really appreciate your uh, intervention as well. Um, I, I think we're quite in agreement here. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely. Completely agree with you. Yeah. Be careful what you say to people. That's what I'm saying. Really. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I would like to open up the floor. So if anybody's question, uh, Johanna will come to you, give you a mic. Uh, please make it uh, easy. <coughs> Hey, um, I have a
question to the point of inclusivity that you brought up. Um, you said, concerning to the language that we use, we should um, mention more often that climate is related to colonization. And uh, I get the point. I'm closer to you than what I will say now might suggest. Um, I came to the Netherlands a year ago, and um, since then I compared to Germany from where I'm from. And in Germany, the conservative parties take up the topic of environmental issues way stronger than here in the Netherlands. So I wonder if we want to be inclusive, isn't it important to bring these parties in and to make it possible for them to adapt these topics uh, in the close future? I talked to one uh, fellow student at my university and he said he was trapped during the elections because he, he's right wing in his opinion, but he wanted to vote green, but he couldn't because no party really offered it that also takes a right wing opinion. So how, do we, how can we be inclusive in that direction? So, uh, how was how he right wing in his opinion? Because if he was right wing in his opinion of like, get the fuck out of my face in this country, then I cannot work with him. Um, if, if he was right wing on economic policy, for example, then uh, again, we get to a more fundamental problem, like how are we going to have the market, marketization, and at the same time have actual sustainability instead of just a Time, jacket, uh, time proof jacket of the same, exact same stuff. Um, so I would say it's maybe two different levels. Like I would, I would not bring these parties in because that's a sure way to, to not have a lot of other people in because I don't know how I'm gonna bring any of my people in if the baby is standing there like la 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 climate change. Fair uh, day. Fair day. Fair day, including fair day, because we should not, another thing, huh? we should not like point at these all oh, Nazis, fascists, as if they're the only racist, because it's really the fair day, it's really the pay for the uh, that are uh, putting these migration prisons that are, are, are systemically, uh, um, well, really racist. So, um, but that's party, that's party level. On a people level, yes. I'd say yes, bring them in. Um, on a people level, let's see why they would vote for their party, and let's see if, uh, look, if they deny my existence, if they deny existence of our potential comrades, and it's kind of gonna be really hard to work together. But if you have some, uh, uh, I, I do think that, and this also relates to uh, what the FMFA also brought in, if uh, we should also not be um, really seeny and like cliquey about who is part of our struggle, Certain people have uh, come from different, um, have different types of education around them. I mean, it's no coincidence that a lot of the people here in the climate movement, in the Zads, where I go, in the, are, are often from the same kind of social milieu. And that's a problem. So um, for sure, I would say, uh, you know, don't be too selective in, don't dismiss people entirely. Uh, if they have slightly different root if they're not radical enough or whatever, but if they're going to be racist, I can be with the in a movement with them, and I really think that it is your responsibility to not make these kind of compromises then, because it might not be so essential to you, but it is to other people, so not to you, huh? Uh, it's you in general. Um, I'd say that, it's, again, it's a question of strategy, like if you say, oh, it's more strategic, I know that, of course, the, uh, the Fave Day has certain uh, elements that we don't want or that are against migrants, but uh, we're just going to strategically organize with them on another front. That's something that if it was a, a POC led thing um, with people who were directly affected by it, they would not have made that prioritization. So at that moment, you're, you're really using your white privilege to get some kind of strategy of the struggle across that is going to be directly against uh, the things you want to be for. So I, I think. Compromising uh, politics is, is really, really, uh, for the sake of strategy, is really, really slippery. Like, uh, it's not just strategy, it's also just priority. Um, and it often has to do with with, uh, with your position as a white person, for example. So. There's been a discussion where I've been where uh, we should kind of, uh, make the, the term climate refugee, um, how do you say, legally, um, how do you say, like a 
legal term because now it's not a legal term and you don't get a status with uh, being a climate refugee. Um, but there are some who says we don't, we don't, uh, we shouldn't have that term climate refugees because it kind of indicates like that the natural climate change um, made the people uh, fled the sea while mainly it's human error of not having good policy of perhaps not having good maintenance making it possible that climate change as a as a force on the bad errors to uh, make people flee. Um, so I was wondering, how do you look upon this this discussion with the climate refugees? Have you is a discussion present within within your group, or is it more? Uh, It is new, it is something that is new, um, but to be honest, I really don't care that much about technology, I really do care about human beings, and if anyone is in a certain situation that you cannot live your life there, then you need to find life somewhere else, and, and even if when we, they started Twisting this luck seekers thing, and who doesn't want luck? And this is what we all strive for, and and there's nothing wrong with that. And so for me, the most important thing is we we you know as as long as you cannot you know like find you cannot live well in the area that you are, then you might as well go and find somewhere else. And there's nothing wrong with that, and and, and that is a fact. And and asylum is right. It is a fundamental right to any human being, and and so for me, I look at it in that in that perspective. And if you if this yeah, it is clear that and, and if someone flee, then you don't have a choice. It is not something that you plan to, but you, you you just don't have a choice. And no one will leave their home knowing that you can stay there. So there is a reason why you can't stay there, and and you have all the right to move because you have. You are able to move. You you do have legs to walk, and, and no one should just. I cannot say to you right now that you you, you cannot just go out of that and, and space because you can actually, and, and it is your own choice, and that should be there. It should be a choice, and to anyone, and that should choice should be someone's choice, and that is all about. Just um, thank you for that. Um, just another uh, comment on the sort of hierarchy of um, sort of legitimate refugees or legitimate causes to be here or like to be a guest here in this wonderful country or whatever, like and causes that are not so legitimate, not so serious. Like there is, they call some things like real war and other things aren't really real war. Like colonialism is a perpetual war and it is also uh, in the way that the, the soil is treated, and it is, it's, it's total, it's total. So it's not just military, which is just one part of it, but it's also, um, indeed, like in the companies, but in, the, in life itself, in the food, in the, all these aspects, it's total war and it's perpetual war. So it, it, the, the sort of distinctions that the Dutch state, for example, makes between what is really war or what is really legitimate also comes from a desire to, uh, to deny that. Tonight it's a total war. <laughs>